If you're going down the self-taught route to become a programmer, so you're foregoing school, you're not going to boot camp, but you're gonna teach this to yourself, you may have realized that your ability to focus and have attention on one thing for a long period of time is very important, right? Because maybe you are at the beginning of your journey and you're just trying to focus on a programming language and understanding how the syntax works. Or maybe you're at a later stage and you're trying to put together some projects for your portfolio and you get stuck and you realize that, hey, if I'm gonna do this, I have to be able to focus for longer than you know five or 10 minutes. You have to actually spend maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour at a time focusing on, on one single problem. And so in this video, what I wanted to talk about is the easiest way that I've seen to improve your focus dramatically. That one thing, that high leverage thing that you can do to improve your focus. And it's something I've noticed working with people. I mentor and coach people who are trying to make this transition. So I know it works and I'm really gonna cover that with you today. Now, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkwitz. I'm a self-taught programmer. I taught myself to code back in 2014. I landed my job in 2015, which I'll actually include a story here. It's a 10 minute story about how I did that. Uh, but this channel is all about helping people do the same thing. So I really focus on the learning process, how to land a job. So if you're interested in that, I actually recommend to hit the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications that, you know, basically anytime I put out a new video. Before I get into how to improve your focus, I think it's incredibly important to understand what is often holding us back from reaching these levels of deep concentration and the ability to really have attention on something for a long period of time. And that is our relationship to technology. So it could be anything from your phone here to social media to uh, even this site that you're watching this on YouTube. All these things allow us access to novel stimulation, meaning some sort of ability to instantly gratify ourselves at any given point in the day. If you're bored waiting for the bus, if you're waiting in a waiting room for your doctor, you can always pull up your phone and see, oh, who texted me? Oh, what's new on Twitter? What's going on in the news? What is blah? And it's just like, it never ends. And this access to novel stimulation is extremely addicting when you have access to it all the time. I compare it to like monkeys who are stuck in a cage and can press a button and get a little sugar droplet and just keep pressing that button over and over again and just addict themselves to these little drops of sugar. The same thing happens when you have constant access to your phone and you're not very conscious about your relationship with it. And so the problem is, is when you need to study for long periods of time, you'll often find that when you get frustrated or you start to lose a little bit of focus with what you're doing, your first temptation is to go off to YouTube, to go off to some, again, social media site, maybe your phone and check your messages. And this is really the problem. The number one problem I would say is that it addicts your brain to novel stimulation. Another problem too is that it promotes task switching. So quickly switching from one task to the other. So maybe you're studying, maybe you're building an application and you just like get a little bit bored. So you go over to social media really quick and then you come back and you're like, oh, I feel a bit better. But the problem is, is that this quick succession of switching of tasks trains your brain to not really be able to focus. If you're with me so far, I urge you not to underestimate how powerful examining this idea of your relationship to technology really is because at the end of the day, most of programming is up in here. It's your ability to understand deeply how to use logic to build some sort of solution or understand some sort of problem that you're facing and come up with a creative solution. And that can really only happen through deep periods of concentration. The more complicated the problem, the more you have to concentrate. If you can get this down, if you can reclaim your ability to be bored, I can tell you that it's like having a superpower. And so it's incredibly important to cultivate that. So if you're going to reclaim your ability to focus deeply and concentrate on something for a long period of time, you're gonna to have to reorient your relationship with social media, with your the technology that you have easy access to. So here's how I recommend doing that. The first thing that I recommend here is to go on a social media or technology diet. And I use that word diet very specifically because it applies really well to what we're talking about here. So if you found that you've gained a few extra pounds in the last year, maybe you went on a diet recently, maybe you went on a diet before vacation or wedding or something similar, and that diet you had to basically figure out, okay, what am I going to eat? What, how, what can I budget in there? When can I have my cheat meals? And in the same way, you should really look at that the same as far as how you consume a lot of content on the internet or how you interact with your phone, for example. So you can't really do the cold turkey thing. You can't throw your phone in a garbage can or turn it off for a week. It's We sort of live in that life now where maybe that's not possible because of your job or something like that. So instead, you should really figure out how much time can you 
actually watch YouTube every week? How much time can you peruse Facebook mindlessly and just like let yourself do it without any guilt? How much time can you spend your phone checking messages and texting back and forth with friends? What do you feel like would be appropriate? And if you wanna get a sense for how much time you're doing that currently, there are tools both on Android phones and iPhones to see how much activity you spent on social media or messaging with people and that sort of thing. So get an idea first and then figure out, okay, I'm gonna allow myself one hour, two hours, three hours per week of YouTube and schedule that time in. And that's really the best way to do it. Don't look at social media as evil. Don't look at your phone as evil. Instead, figure out what that healthy relationship is. Try to figure out goals for how much time you're gonna spend per week on it, and then go from there. From there, once you have a diet in place, once you have those goals of how much time you wanna limit it per week, the second thing that you wanna do is not rely on willpower to enforce your interactions with social media and your technology that you have on hand. What I mean by this is if you just, you know, if you create this goal or plan for how you're gonna interact with everything that you're, you know, all the content that you're used to getting, if you're just relying on your willpower to not check your phone when it dings, or if you're relying on your willpower to not pick up your phone when it's next to you and you're studying, then you're going to struggle a lot. Because look, at the end of the day, we're all human and humans are, we're, we're very valuable to our limbic system, to our emotions, to that like primal urge to do things, right? Like for example, when you're really hungry, your primal urge is to eat something. When you're stressed out, your primal urge is to relieve that stress. And so you can't rely on willpower in all situations. So don't try to like leave your phone next to you while you're studying, for example. Instead, what I recommend is put your phone on do not disturb, put your phone on vibrate, or even leave your phone outside the room when you know you need to engage in some sort of task where you need deep focus. There's also applications you can run on your computer to block out certain websites and certain uh, applications so that you don't access them during focus periods. But whatever it is, you can't just rely on your willpower. Have rules in place so you're not tempted by things. The analogy here that I use is like, imagine you're on a diet and you have cookies in your pantry downstairs. Well. You may say to yourself, I'm never gonna eat those cookies, I'm gonna wait to the end of my diet, but the problem is, is you're gonna have a weak point at some point. And so if you have those diet, those cookies in your pantry, you're going to be tempted when the time comes, when you're tested, when your willpower is very low, you're gonna go downstairs and eat the cookies in your pantry. So instead, never buy the cookies. Don't even have the cookies in your house, so that way when your willpower is down, you're not gonna be tempted to do it. It's the same exact thing, except do this with your relationship to technology and some of the content that you consume. The last thing I recommend here is to replace a lot of those old behaviors that you had that promote instant gratification, novel stimulation, and also frequent task switching with, with behaviors that are the opposite of that. So for example, you could replace Facebook or YouTube with reading a book. A book is a lot less gratif gratification, right? Because it's slower. It also doesn't promote task switching because most people when they have a book in their hand are not switching from book to book, even if it's a Kindle book. So that's a great way. And obviously you can gain a lot of knowledge out of that over time. Also too, you can replace behaviors with something like meditation. So you, meditation and even something like yoga as well help you to focus on breathing, on not necessarily having to do something all the time and that can retrain your brain. Other things that you can replace those behaviors with is going for walks, exercising, both of those require you to be present in the moment and not necessarily focus on novel stimulation. And really the last thing I'd say is use technology, use some of the, the things that are available to us now to limit those addictive behaviors in technology. So for example, I have a plugin for my browser that actually blocks the Facebook feed. So when I go onto Facebook, I actually can't see that feed. And the feed is one of the most addictive parts of Facebook. There's also one for YouTube that doesn't show you recommended videos. So if you wanna go on YouTube and you know you have that problem where like the next video you always wanna watch, there's a, there's a plugin that you can install for Chrome for that. And there's many others for other websites. There's even uh, applications you can install on your own computer that will block certain applications and certain websites so you can't go to them during focus periods. So really think about your life. Do an audit here. Focus on things that are not always gonna cause you to task switch, that are not gonna give you those instant hits of serotonin or dopamine in your brain and, and don't give you that instant gratification. And those things that you do really enjoy that do give you those, just make sure to limit it as much as you can so you're not constantly being bombarded by them. So look guys, don't take this lightly. Ultimately, your ability to understand and come up with creative solutions for things will require you to really be able to be bored. I say this a lot, but being able to be bored is a superpower that we are losing because we 
again, have access to novel stimulation and instant gratification as much as we want. And so we have to have a much better relationship with it. But I hope that this video has helped. I hope some of the, the tips I've given you give you an idea of how to improve things moving forward. So if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Also leave a comment if you learned anything or you have anything to share about your experience with trying to improve your attention and ability to focus. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, peace out.